Hi everyone, in this video we are going to go through how we can use colorimetry in order to experimentally calculate the KEQ value of an equilibrium system. We'll first begin by looking at what is colorimetry, then we'll look at the components of the colorimeter, and finally we'll look at how we can conduct the experiment. So let's begin by talking about what is colorimetry. Colorimetry is a spectroscopic technique, and we can use it to determine the concentration of an analyte based on the absorption of a particular color. We should know that different colors of light have different wavelengths. And so the basis of a colored compound is that it absorbs the light that's on the opposing color of the color wheel. So for example, this means that if I have an orange colored substance, we should expect looking at our color wheel that it mainly absorbs blue light and thus reflects the other wavelengths of light. Let's look at the components of a colorimeter. So in our colorimeter, we have a light source, which is then focused by a collimator, that's just a lens, and that light source is then refracted through the monochromator and passed through a wavelength selector. This wavelength selector is going to filter out our undesirable wavelengths of light, which we do not want to analyze. And so once this is done, that wavelength of light passes through our sample of solution, and a detector will then determine how much of the light was absorbed and produce that on a digital display. So the optic filter is what changes the wavelength of light produced by the colorimeter. We want to select the color that is best absorbed by the solution, so we need to check the color wheel. Again, we'll use our example of the orange colored substance. Looking at our color wheel, orange colored substances are going to absorb mostly blue light. So to use our colorimeter to analyze the sample, we are going to analyze how much blue light it is going to absorb, and thus we select the blue option. Looking at this picture here of our colorimeter, we see faintly on the left hand side four different color options which can be chosen for the optic filter. The top is blue, green, yellow, and red. If we also look over here, what we'll see is that there are squares with this one protruding right in the center. This is where we put our analyte in and is contained in what we call a cuvette. So cuvettes are these small rectangular vessels which contain the analyte. They're made from a variety of transparent materials such as glass, quartz, or sometimes just plastic. But the primary reason for being transparent is because they are going to allow light to pass through and be absorbed by the analyte in the one direction, which is just going to be in this direction through the clear faces. We see that the other two faces are frosted, and the reason for this is to prevent the light from escaping. Also, since the light cannot pass through the frosted faces, it is important that when we handle the cuvettes, we only hold them by their frosted faces. If we get our fingerprints onto these transparent faces, they may produce some unwanted absorption values. Looking here, we see that the frosted faces, or in this case the waved faces, of this cuvette are facing the Y direction. This is because the light is going to be traveling through in the X direction on the colorimeter. On to conducting the experiment. So the aim of our experiment is going to be to use a colorimeter to determine the KEQ of an equilibrium system. And we are going to now go through how that is done. So let's do an example experiment for calculating KEQ. Our materials for this particular experiment are going to include 0.0020 moles per liter of potassium thiocyanate solution. That's this clear solution over here. We are going to have a 0.0020 mole per liter solution of iron 3 nitrate, which is this orange solution here. And we are going to have six different iron 3 thiocyanate standard solutions, which means they are solutions with a known concentration. And then we are also going to use deionized water. We discussed the iron thiocyanate equilibrium in the video, iron thiocyanate equilibrium. Now the reason why the solutions are not blood red is because of the levels of dilution. Things to consider in our risk assessment include the thiocyanate solution, which is irritating to our skin and eyes. The thiocyanate standard solution is going to contain nitric acid and is irritating to our skin and eyes. And the iron nitrate solution is irritating to our eyes, respiratory system and skin. And the way which we can prevent these hazards is by ensuring that we wear the appropriate protective equipment. In our method, we'll also be making four solutions by mixing various volumes of iron nitrate potassium thiocyanate, and water to a total volume of 10 milliliters. The reason why we are going to do this is so that we have four different absorption values 
which we can analyze to determine the concentration at equilibrium. Before we use our colorimeter, we are going to blank the machine by filling up the cuvette with the solvent which is used. This solvent absorbance is then measured. And the reason why we blank this machine is to ensure that the absorbance measured is only from the analyte, which means that if we have any impurities in that solvent, we'll be able to remove the absorbance of those impurities from the absorbance of the final solution. So blanking a colorimeter in the colorimetry experiment is the equivalent of doing a background spectrum in the UVV spec. Once we've blanked our colorimeter, we can then check the absorbance values for the four solutions which we prepared, and then measure them in the colorimeter. Since the solutions are orange, they must be absorbing mostly blue light. This means we are going to set our optic filter to the blue color since the solution is on the opposite side of the color wheel. The absorbance values which are given to us by the color emitter device are going to be the amount of light which are absorbed of a particular wavelength for that particular sample. There are no formulas which we need to input, we simply need to get the values from the device. The calibration curve is a curve which is created by drawing a line of best fit by plotting multiple standard solutions absorbance values which we can then use to determine the equilibrium concentration of the iron thiocyanate given different absorbances. And we'll give an example of how that is done. So remembering in our sample, we had six standard solutions. Each of them had a concentration of 0 0.00005, 0 0.001, 0 0.0015, 0 .0015, up to 0 0.0003. When we put these standard solutions into the colorimeter, they provide us with these absorbance values. When we plot them onto a graph and draw a line of best fit, we see that Trendline provides us with the formula 4045.7x plus 0 0.002 is y, where y is the absorbance value and x is the concentration. This means by obtaining the absorbance values for the four different solutions a, b, c, and d, we can then work backwards to calculate what their concentrations are at equilibrium. So we know that KEQ is given by the formula products over reactants. This means that in order to calculate the KEQ, we will need to work out the concentration of the products at equilibrium and the reactants at equilibrium. And in doing that, we need to begin by working out what the initial concentrations are. The concentration formula is given by C equals to N over V. Looking at our iron initial concentration, N is going to be equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume which is going to be 0 0.0020 times 5 milliliters divided by our total volume, which is 10 milliliters. This is then going to give us a value of 0 0.001. And since we have the same amount of iron nitrate in each of them, all the concentrations will be 0 0.001. We then do the same for the thiocyanate. However, in this case, the thiocyanate concentration is going to be changing 2, 3, 4, and 5. So then it would be the concentration of the thiocyanate, which is 0 0.0020, multiplied by the volume of the solution, which is 2 mils, divided by the total, which is 10 milliliters, which is equal to 0 0.0004, for 3, it will be 0 0.0006. For 4, it will be 0 0.0008. And since there's the same amount of thiocyanate and nitrate in the final solution, the concentration will also be 0 0.001. When we entered these solutions into the colorimeter, we obtained the following absorbance values. 0 0.19, 0 0.27, 0 0.35, and 0 0.43. This is where we need to use our calibration curve again to work out the concentration at equilibrium for an absorbance value y. So our formula is given as y equals to 4045.7x plus 0 0.002, where y is the absorbance and x is the iron thiocyanate concentration at equilibrium. So we take our value 0 0.19 for our first solution A, and we substitute that into this value for y. So what this will be if we rearrange it. So what this means is that 0 0.19 equals to 
and 45.7x plus 0.002. We can then rearrange this equation to work out our value for x. If we make x our subject, x will then equal to 0.19 minus 0.002 divided by 4045.7. From here, we'll get the concentration of our iron thiocyanate at equilibrium, which will be equal to 0 0.0000465. And if we do that same calculation, substituting our absorbance value into y and rearranging for x, we end up getting the value for the second one for solution B as being 0 0.0000. .0000 662 for C as 0 0.0000860 and finally for C as 0 0.0001057. So now that we've entered all these values into the table, we finally need to determine what the concentration of the iron 3 plus at equilibrium is and the thiocyanate at equilibrium. In order to do so, we'll need to use our ice table. Our equilibrium reaction is given by the equation iron 3 plus plus thiocyanate gives us iron thiocyanate in an equilibrium. So let's look at solution A as our example. We've calculated that initially there was 0 0.001 moles of Fe3 plus and 0 0.0004 moles of thiocyanate. Initially, there was no product. However, we know that using our calibration curve, there was a final concentration of product as 0 0.0000465 and since they react in a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio we know that this must have gained x, this must have lost x and this must also have lost an x amount. This means we know that an x amount is equal to 0 0.0000465. So now we can fill in our tables. The final concentration of SCN is 0 0.0004 minus x and this is 0 0.001 minus x, where x is given by this value. Now putting that into the calculator, we end up getting these values. 0 0.0009525 for iron 3 plus, 0 0.0003525 for thiocyanate, and this was the value which we worked out using the calibration curve earlier. So now our entire table can be filled in. So now we know what the KEQ expression is, and we have the equilibrium concentrations for everything that we need. We can substitute them into our formula here in order to calculate what our KEQ is. So for example, for A, we know that this is the product concentration, this is our Fe3 plus concentration, and this is our thiocyanate concentration at equilibrium. If we plug those values in, we end up getting a KEQ value of 141.47 for A. We can do the same for B, C, and D, so you end up getting values of 136, 135, and 135. When we assess the experiment, we need to consider a couple of things that we did. What are some assumptions that we have? Well, the assumption is that the absorbance is due only to the iron thiocyanate. And the reason why is because we had blanked the solvent earlier. We were also assuming that our variables were controlled, such as the temperature, the same equipment, the same colorimeter, and the same cuvette. We can determine the accuracy of our solutions by comparing them with our theoretical solutions. We can determine the accuracy of our solutions KEQ values by comparing them with the theoretical KEQ values. First, we'll discuss some reasons why our results may not be entirely accurate. Well, first off, our solution concentrations might not be correct. Some reasons being that there's an incomplete quantitative transfer, which means that in some step, we might not have transferred everything that we needed into another solution. And some reasons for this may be limited by the precision of our equipment, such as whether or not we were using a correct type of pipette. When we compare our experimental and our accepted values, we see that the average calculated KEQ was 137. However, the accepted KEQ is 113, and that's a relatively large difference, so we can say that our results were inaccurate. Going back to our precision of the equipment, we may have had a more accurate result if we used micro pipettes and pipettes instead of pasta pipettes, which are these ones here, when we are preparing our standard solutions. So how about reliability? 
but reliability is dependent on the consistency of our experiment. And since the standard deviation of the four values is quite low, we can say that the experiment is reliable. The KQ values could have been repeated multiple times, which could potentially improve on the reliability. And it's important to know that the repetition of an experiment can only potentially improve the reliability. This is because ultimately we are repeating the experiment only to potentially get more consistent results. We do not know if those results are going to be more consistent. Results are going to be valid if they are both actual and reliable, and can vary from experiment to experiment depending on whether the correct method and materials were used. So what can we say in conclusion? Well, in conclusion, that experiment was successful in calculating the KEQ. However, an issue is that the experimental KEQ value was inaccurate, and the reason why is because the KEQ value that we got was much higher than the theoretical value, and some reasons might be attributed to the equipment that we used when we prepared the solutions. And what we discussed was that we could have used maybe a micro pipette or a pipette to use instead of a pasta pipette when we are preparing the solution.